Hello and welcome back to our unit on climate. Okay, today we're going to discuss some climate types, seasons, okay, and climate change, day three of four. Our objectives is you will know the five basic climate types. You will know how the seasons are created, okay, and you will understand how catastrophic events have changed or altered Earth's climate in the past. And you will understand what are known as Milankovitch cycles and how they affect the amount of incoming solar radiation to Earth. Okay, so... What if someone told you that the seasons are the result of being Earth close to the sun in the summer, okay, and far from the sun in the winter? Would you agree with that person? Why or no, I not, okay? What are some natural catastrophic events that could alter or change Earth's global climate, okay? So, let's start off by learning how we classify climates. This map over here is basically a climate map. It tells you what kind of climates are distributed throughout the world. So how should we classify climates? As it turns out, climates are classified by temperature and precipitation. How hot or how wet a place is, right? There's five basic climate types. There's more, and these are subdivided into more, um, more different types of climates, okay, but the five basic are tropical, temperate, arid or desert dry climates, and continental climates, and polar climates, okay? So, if you look at this map, you can get a sense for where the dry climates are, right? You can get a sense for where the tropical climates are, and where the polar climates are, okay? Well, Let's examine this a little further. We have tropical climates, right? Right around the equator, right? Tropical. There's two types of tropical climates. There's tropical wet. There's tropical wet and dry. Okay? And there's arid or desert climates. There's semi-dry, a little dry, and there's really dry, right? So those are desert climates. And then we have temperate climates. We live in what's called a Mediterranean temperate climate. Temperate just means it gets kind of cold and it gets kind of warm. And there is maritime, right, okay, which are by the ocean, okay, like San Francisco, so it's a temperate. Then we get continental climates, okay, humid and subarctic, all right, so we're getting kind of cold, right, and humid, so the east coast over here is pretty humid, can get kind of humid. Then, okay, polar climates. Okay, high elevation. Look at the Himalayan mountains here, the tallest mountains in the world. We have polar climates, and they're kind of by the equator, really, so it's not too far. So high elevation climates can be extremely cold. Remember, as you go up in elevation in the troposphere, temperatures decrease. We have tundra, okay? We have ice cap way up here, right? Antarctica, okay? So what are the five basic climate types? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side of your notes. Okay, use the answer bank, as always, to determine which words best complete these blanks. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, seasons. Seasons are a natural change in the Earth's climate. Okay, seasons change climate by a change in daylight, temperature, and weather patterns. These changes or variations have to do with the amount of solar radiation or light or energy we receive from the sun. Because the earth revolves around the sun tilted on its side, different parts of the earth receive varying amounts of sunlight during the course of a year. This changes our weather, temperature, and the amount of daylight, right? You guys know that in the winter time, shorter hours of light in the summertime, more hours of sunlight, okay? So it has nothing to do with how close or far we are from the sun. Okay, our seasons are the result of Earth's tilt 23.4 degrees here on its axis. Earth is slightly tilted, and because of that, we get our seasons. Okay, so notice something. In the summer, we're tilted towards the sun. In the fall, or excuse me, the winter, we'll t our north pole is tilted away from the sun. Okay, and then in the summer, once again, the north pole is tilted towards the sun. Okay. So, that's what our seasons are the result of. Okay, let's examine this a little bit further. Okay, let's throw our 
sun here. This is not to scale, obviously. All right, so we have our sun and our earth spinning. Okay, let's throw an equator and a north and south pole on there. And let's, okay, shine some light on our earth. What season is it in the northern hemisphere? In other words, which hemisphere in the north or south is receiving more sunlight? Okay, well, some parts are receiving 24 hours of sunlight up here. Okay, well, it is summer in the northern hemisphere, right? More sunlight. Winter in the southern hemisphere. Less sunlight, right? So that's summer. Then we go to, as we go around the sun, we got fall right there. And then let's examine winter, though. Winter, okay, once again, let's throw some north and south poles on there. Shine some light on our earth. Okay. Which season is it in our northern hemisphere in America here? Well, it's winter, right? We're receiving less amount of sunlight. And then we have the summer down in the southern hemisphere. So down here, Australia here is getting summertime. We're getting wintertime up in North America. Okay. So, in fact, some places in the North Pole, good old Santa Claus up here, is getting 24 hours of darkness. Okay. So no sunlight during uh, certain parts of winter. And then we go to spring and back to summer, right? Okay, so what are seasons? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Pause this while you write, please. Okay, ice ages. Each year we receive our seasons, which give us predictable, pretty constant weather. However, our Earth was not always like this. Geologic records show that in the past, climates have changed. Okay, in the past two million years, glaciers have covered large parts of the Earth's surface. These periods of extensive or massive glacial coverage are also called ice ages. Okay, ice ages are, huge, are periods when much of our Earth was covered by massive sheets of ice called glaciers. Okay, notice here. The glaciers over two million years have come and gone. They've come down and they've receded or gone away. Okay. So throughout the past three million years, like I said, ice ages have come and gone. Right now we're coming out of an ice age. So the earth is warming. We call periods between ice ages interglacial intervals. And we go in and out of an ice age oh, about every 20 to 35,000 years. Sometimes longer, sometimes less. Okay. So during the last ice age, look at parts of Lake Tahoe were under massive sheets of ice here. Okay, much of North America, the Great Lakes. In fact, that's how the Great Lakes were created by these huge sheets of ice scooping out parts of land. Okay, look at England. England is under ice. Okay, so that was the last ice age, right? So what are ice ages? Question on the left hand side. Uh, answer on the right hand side, please, and use the answer bank to determine which word best completes that blank right here. Okay, go ahead and pause this, please. I'm going to move on. All right, natural changes in climate. So why does our Earth's temperature fluctuate, bringing about colder periods, ice ages, and warmer periods? Okay, well, climate change on a global scale may have to do with catastrophic events and the natural movement of Earth. These natural events may have altered the amount of solar energy or radiation heat we receive from the sun. Okay, So if you look at the average global temperatures here in the last 800,000 years, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down. It's like this roller coaster, right? So what causes these fluctuations? Well, one thing is, is natural catastrophic events, like meteorite impacts in volcanic eruptions. These events put enormous amounts of dust, ash, and smoke into the upper atmosphere. Okay, this dust, ash, and smoke particles could have blocked out enough solar radiation that it could have had a cooling effect on the planet, ultimately changing its climate. This is the eruption of Mount Pinatubo here. It was seen from space. Okay, this eruption, this one single volcanic eruption, okay, altered Earth's climate for about a year or so. Okay, so 
If enough volcanic eruptions were to occur at or near the same time, the results could have had a major effect on the Earth's climate, a cooling effect. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted. It put enough volcanic ash into our atmosphere to change the temperatures and climates around the world. Okay, So look at this red and yellow areas where ash cover was at its maximum. And where does Earth receive most of its sunlight? The equator. And look at where most of the ash is. Okay, The result was, look at the Earth's average temperature here. It went up, it went down for 1990. Mount Pinatubo erupts here. And the Earth's average temperature dropped by about a half a degree. And a half a degree doesn't seem very much. But just a half a degree was enough to alter Earth's climate. Okay, So, one volcanic eruption. Okay? And that was a massive volcanic eruption. Okay, In the past, geologic evidence shows that huge meteorite impacts could have also contributed to climate change. Just like volcanic eruptions, a meteorite impact would have also put enormous amounts of dust, smoke into the atmosphere, blocking solar radiation. So a meteorite impact could have exploded here, okay, and causing widespread fires and devastation, okay, putting smoke into our atmosphere, effectively blocking out the sun, right, cooling the planet. So these are just two natural events. There's more, but for your notes, what are some natural events that could alter Earth's climate? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. We got one more. Okay, we're almost there. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so Milankovitch cycles. Sounds kind of crazy, okay? But this is named after the Serbian geophysicist and astronomer uh, Milutin Milankovic. These cycles deal with natural climate changes that are the result of slight movements in Earth's tilt, right? And the orbit around the sun. These movements affect the amount of sunlight reaching Earth, naturally changing its climate. Three movements exist. We have eccentricity, precession, and obliquity. Fun words to say. You should try saying them real quick. Eccentricity, eccentricity excuse me, precession, and obliquity. Okay, so eccentricity is the change in the shape of the Earth's orbit around the sun. Over a 95,000 year cycle, the sun's orbit around the sun changes from a more oval shape to a more circular shape. So it's kind of like it goes from a more football shape to a more circular shape, and that's eccentricity. When the orbit around the sun is most elliptical, most football shaped, right, there is a large difference in the distance between the Earth and sun, and this naturally changes the climate. Farther away from the sun, it gets colder, right? So this increased distance may play a role in the amount of sunlight Earth receives, therefore affecting its climate. Then we have the good old obliquity. Obliquity is when Earth's tilt or angle on Earth, its axis slightly changes. This is a 42,000 year cycle and the Earth wobbles in the angle of the axis with respect to the plane of the revolution around the Sun, which varies between 22.1 and 24.1. So this wobble, think of it as a top, right? Excuse me, not a top, but it slightly changes, right? This, this um, tilt. Earth's tilt on its axis varies between 22.1 and 24.5, okay? This means seasonal differences, because we just learned the seasons are caused by Earth's tilt on its axis. So the seasons can be more extreme, okay, if this tilt on Earth's axis changes, okay? So this means seasonal differences between the northern and southern hemispheres get worse or less, okay? Finally, we have precession. Precession is the Earth's slight wobble as it spins on its axis. The wobbling of the Earth on its axis can be likened to a top, right? That wobbles as it spins, okay? And begins to slow down. Okay, you don't have to worry. The Earth isn't slowing down, though. Okay, the precession of Earth wobbles from pointing at a Polaris, the North Star, and it wobbles to pointing to Vega. When this shift occurs, okay, on the axis... Okay, Vega would then be considered the North Star. This top-like wobble or precession has a periodicity of 23,000 years. So it's a 23,000-year cycle. Okay, so in about 23,000 years or so, Earth's axis is going to point to not the North Star, but to Vega. Okay, these wobbles will change the Earth's axis like obliquity. 
affecting Earth's seasons in the amount of incoming solar radiation. So, in 13,000, that should say 1,000 years, Vega will be our new North Star. Okay, so here's Polaris, the North Star, and here's Vega. Okay? So, for your notes, what are Milankovitch cycles? Okay, quite, last one for today. Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, you're almost done. Okay. All right, so summarize. All right, you can always write your own. All right, so, or you can do mine. This is day three of four. You're all finished. Go ahead and complete your summaries for 20 points, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.